I'm getting ready to uh, set the post on the porch. These are red cedar, just like our floor. And I'm putting a screw jack on the bottom. Now this will allow for settling. And we can hide this screw jack with just a little piece of trim around the bottom of this to, that can be taken off so that this nut can be loosened and let the post down as the roof settles. These are basically made the same way that I used on the uh, kitchen on the settling beam on the top, except that this is going to be at the bottom. What I've done to get the center, I just made a mark from corner to corner and took my awl and made a little hole so that I could get the screw lead on the, the bit in the center and it'll pull itself on in. We have our porch beam cut to length. The rafters are laid out on the top. And I did a little chamfer here, like I normally do on the end of a log. We're gonna be lifting this up. This is something that I've never done. So we're gonna video this so we'll know what happened. We've got a snatch block there, strap and snatch block there, and a cable up in that tree right there, and one in this tree. got the beam up in good shape got it bolted down with lag bolts it goes through down into the cedar post and it's braced off really well and I dropped a plumb bob down from the outside of the beam down to this point right here and we're right on target on both ends of it which that's good and you can see the screw jacks there we can adjust that as needed so we'll be in good shape there all four posts have a screw jack under them. You can see a strap and a come along up here. We had to pull that beam in just about an eighth of an inch. And we've got tie beams up here that are screwed to the wall and down to the top of the beam. I've got one more to cut and set up there to have this locked down. Then we can take this 
come along and the straps down. I've got the ribbon up that the rafters will tie into up against the building. And I've got the screws screwed in where the rafter itself was set on that. I went ahead and laid the lath out on the top of the rafter so I won't have to do that climbing around up there. I can put a 2 before 4 lath on, screw it down, and the next one's already laid out all the way up. And at the very top, I'll put two, two 2 before 4s here, one at the very peak and then one down underneath it. I don't normally make a full length rafter template, but in this case I did. I had a one by eight that was pretty straight. I just cut the peak cut up there and put a little piece of cedar on the top of it. I'll show you what I'm doing. You can see a line right here, and I added a half an inch out here. Now the reason I did that is so that I can fit the peak of the rafters up against the ribbon in case the ribbon is not exactly plumb, I know from end to end the log that it is attached to is uh, quite a bit thicker on one end. I say quite a bit, a good quarter of an inch thicker on actually on this end down here than it is down here. But the beam is on the money. It's right where it needs to be. And so I can make sure that my seat cuts rub tight against the beam and fit the peak or the top of the rafters up against the ribbon. I'll show you what I'm doing when I get to that point. So I've got my rafter sitting up here. I've got a two before block on the top of it. On the back side here, I have flushed it with the, the back side of this rafter. And I've got it up tight against the ribbon and I will go to the to the other end of it on the beam and I will measure and see how much I need to cut off of that. I've actually got a pretty good fit up there as it is. I've got to close up the seat cut on the beam. You can see right here I've got a gap and that was that half inch that I left long on the rafters so that I could fit them up against the ribbon and what I'm doing, I'm taking my steel ruler and I'm just measuring what I've got there to this point right here. Now according to that I need to take 5 eighths of an inch off of the peak. It's the same on both sides, it's 5 eighths of an inch. And that'll close this gap up and bring it up tight against the beam. I may block the view with what I'm doing here, but I'll get out of the way. I'll let you see, I've got my steel ruler butted right against the ribbon, and I'll be able to measure 5 eighths back and make a mark on the end of my rafter at the bottom and up here at the top. That's why this block is flush so that I can get my steel ruler in there without bending it. I'm not sure you can see it, but there's a little bitty dot right there and another one right up here. And I'll connect those dots and I'll saw that much off of it. And that will let the, the rafter come this way and close up the gap out there at the seat. So I can take it down now and take my skill saw and, and, and cut that. I hope you can hear me, I know that big fan's running. But I'm setting one screw here that will pull down and in to keep this up tight against the outside of the beam. The 
rafters are up. It's been a long, long, hot, hot, hot day. The temperatures are well over 100 degrees for over two weeks, and that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But we've got them up there. We've done good. We're ready for the lath. We've got it ready for the metal roof. I sure am glad to have this chore done. We have our metal put on the porch roof. We've got here on the ground, we have the last sheet and the starter sheet. I drill that, that first screw a little bit in so that I uh, can actually hit into the lathing and not have to worry about hitting fascia board itself. We've got all the lathing up as I normally do, two foot centers. We used red cedar for a fascia board and I've got the little metal uh, drip edge on there. And I'm not sure you can see it. There's a string that's two inches out from the metal uh, drip edge for us to line the bottom of the sheets up with. got the metal all along and screwed down and the temperatures rise and it's really hot so we are going to knock off for the rest of the day see if we can find a cool place to get and a tall glass of iced tea